welcome to Teacher Gimbal's channel. Today we'll be going over our illustrative math geometry unit one lesson 17. If you like this video, please make sure to like and subscribe to the button down there. And also if you want personalized videos or if you want any lessons that I haven't posted yet, if you subscribe to my Patreon and send me a message, I will make those videos for you in the next few days. It could be on any topic of mathematics from younger kids all the way up to AP calculus and I'll make what you need. You can find the link to my Patreon in my bio. Let's get started. Problem one, quadrilateral ABCD is congruent to quadrilateral A prime B prime C prime D prime. Describe a sequence of rigid motions that takes A to A prime B to B prime C to C prime and D to D prime. So we're gonna have to visualize this together. I know, I always like to choose like the most obvious side. So I know this side is gonna line up with that side. And that's pretty intuitive to me because I see it's gonna shift down there. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate my figure and I want to rotate him 90 degrees and I'm going to make it easy. I'm going to rotate him around point B, which means this side is going to like pick up. He's going to come down and he's going to look something along the lines like this. So this being C, D, B, uh, B is going to stay right here and A is going to go over there. Once I've rotated him 90 degrees, all I need to do is translate him or slide him over this much, so by this directed line segment. So a 90 degree clockwise rotation around point B, and then a translation using this directed line segment will bring quadrilateral A, B, C, D over to quadrilateral A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime. All right, and next question. Two, select all transformations that will take any point that must take any point A to any point B. So this means we have some point A and some point B. And it doesn't matter where they are because it's any point A to any point B. And we got to figure out which of these will bring A to B no matter what. Rotation around 180 degrees around A. Any rotation around A is going to leave A exactly where it is. It's not going to bring them to B, so that's not going to work. Rotation 180 degrees around B. Well, rotating A 180 degrees around B is going to kind of bring them all the way over here. That does not bring A to B. So, no. Rotating 180 degrees around the midpoint of segment AB. So in this case, we have a segment AB. We've identified the midpoint. And now we're rotating 180 degrees around that midpoint. That is always going to bring A to B. What if we reflect across the line AB? If we're reflecting A across the line AB, well, this is line AB, and A is on the line of reflection, so A is not going to move anywhere. When we're reflecting across AB, it brings points like from here to here. So say we had another point C, would bring C prime over there, but A is not going to move and definitely not going to go all the way down to B. So this is not correct. Let's clean this up a little bit. Reflection across the perpendicular bisector of AB. Well, if we have AB just like that, and we have a perpendicular bisector, we know that the line of reflection is always perpendicular to the line between points of reflection. And so in this case, if A is going to be reflected over this line, he's going to go to exactly where B is. So this one is also correct. F, translation by the directed line segment AB. So let's get rid of all of this extra stuff and think about what that would look like. Well, the directed line segment AB is going to look like that. And if we take A and we translate him along AB, is it going to bring A to B? That's a pretty clever way. I think that's my favorite so far. And then translation by the directed line segment BA, we got to go back up and look into our instructions. We're bringing A to B. So the directed line segment BA is this one, which means if we use BA, and let's erase that one, A is going to go over here somewhere. A is not going to go onto B. So that one's not going to work. All right, and we're finished. Let's go on to the next question, problem three. Triangle ABC is congruent to triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. Describe a sequence of rigid motion that takes A to A prime, B to B prime, and C to C prime. All right, well, in this case, I'm gonna take my triangle 
and I'm going to put A on top of A prime. So we're going to translate him by a directed line segment that looks something like that. And that's going to bring this triangle kind of over here. B prime, C prime. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to want to take this triangle and I'm going to run and rotate him. So C goes to C prime and B goes to B prime. Well, we're not going to call them primes yet because I guess we didn't get all the way there. So we're going to take it and then we're going to rotate. My estimate for a rotation, that's about a 30 degree clockwise because we're going in the direction of a clock rotation around point and we're going to say a prime because we're going to be rotating around this point right there. So first we translate it by a directed line segment that you can see right here. And then we're rotating him 30 degrees clockwise around point a prime. All right, next question. Problem number four. A triangle has rotational symmetry that can take any of his vertices to any of its other vertices. Select all conclusions that we can reach from this. So I immediately know if this vertex has rotational symmetry to go to this one, to go to this one, that all of the angle measures are going to have to be the same. So I know these angle measures are going to be the same. And I also know that this side right here is going to rotate. So this side starts here. But when I rotate this angle to that angle, that side goes here and that side goes there, which tells me that the side measures of this triangle are all going to be the same. So A has to be true and B has to be true. All rotations take one half of the triangle to the other half of the triangle. I don't think that's true. I'm like a half of the triangle would be here. And when we rotate it, it's not bringing this half to that half. We're bringing this down to here. So no, it's a right triangle. Well, it's impossible for a right triangle to have all three angles the same. So no, none of the sides of the triangle has the same length. Nope. We just talked about that with all the sides that are going to have to have the same length and none of the angles have all the same measure. Also not true. Okay. All the angles have to have the same measure. And we're done. Let's go on to the next question. Problem five. Select all angles of rotation that produce symmetry for this flower. So we're going to look at this petal right here. And we're going to say, what does it take to get this petal to that petal? Well, that's a 90 degree rotation because we're taking kind of a center and bringing it to the center. And then we want to bring it to the center down there because that would also produce symmetry. That would be a 180 degree rotation. Or we could bring it all the way over there, which would be a 270 degree rotation. We could bring it back to the beginning, which gets us 360, but we don't consider those 360 turns that bring the big the pedal back to where it started, rotational symmetry. So scrolling down, our correct answers would be 90 and 180. And we're done. All right, let's go on to the next question. We have a right triangle has lines of symmetry. Select all conclusions that must be true. So we're going to have a right triangle. Now, before I determine how long each of my sides are, I can kind of imagine that my line of symmetry is going to have to go right down that right triangle because right angle, because we're not going to have any other right angles to line up, which then tells me that this side and this side are going to also have to line up. These two sides are going to have to line up as we kind of fold over or reflect over this line which tells me this angle has to be equal to that angle. So do all sides of the triangle have the same length? No, this side could be longer or shorter, not necessarily have to have the same length as the other side. All angles of a triangle have the same measure. It's a, you can't have a 90 degree triangle, a right triangle with three measures of 90 degrees. That does not work. So no, two sides of the triangle have to have the same length. Yup, that is true. Two angles of the triangle have to have the same measure. Also true. We talked about that. No sides of the triangle have the same length. That can't be true because in order to have that symmetry, this side is going to have to line up with that side. And so they're going to have to be the same measure. Not true. No angles of the triangle have the same measure. Similarly, this angle is going to have to line up with that angle. So therefore, they're the same measure. So this one is not true. As I always say, always draw a picture because it helps you kind of figure out these problems more efficiently. Visualization is the key. Problem seven, in quadrilateral BADC, 
AB is equal to AD. So I'm going to say AB is equal to AD. And BC is equal to DC. Line of AC is a line of symmetry. So I'm going to draw a line AC right here. I'm going to say line of symmetry. So I know who he is. Based on the line of symmetry, explain why angles ACB and ACD have the same measure. Now, after learning about lines of symmetry, we know it's the same thing as reflecting over this line. So this side, this angle, reflects over the line of symmetry to line up exactly with this dotted angle. And we know that reflections preserve the measure of angles. And so this angle right here, A, O, oh, B, C, is going to have to be congruent to A, D, C. Now, looking at the question, I realize I answered the wrong question. And making mistakes is a part of every mathematician's journey. So it says explain why angles A, C, B and A, C, D have the same measure. So in this case, we're actually thinking A, C, D is this one right here. Let's trace them out. And A, C, D is this one right there. But as you can see, it's exactly the same reasoning because this angle is going to get reflected and line up with that angle. And the reflections preserve angle measure, so the angle measure isn't going to change, and that's why they have the same measure. So it's the same reason, just talking about different angles. All right, let's go on to problem B, problem 8. Which of these constructions would construct a line of reflection that takes point A to point B? We have A over here, we've got B over here. Construct the midpoint of segment AB. Um, I did that, but that didn't bring A to B, so nope. Construct the perpendicular bisector of AB. I did that too, also did not bring A to B. Construct a line tangent to circle A with radius AB. Um, circle A with radius AB. Well, that would look something like this, because this is our radius. And this guy would be tangent, kind of just touching the edge. Imagine that just touches the edge like that. Also <laughs> does not bring point A to point B. Construct a vertical line. Oh, it's asking, we're not bringing point A to point B. We're constructing a line of reflection. Huh. All right, another mistake. That's okay. So which one of these, let's finish our last one, and we'll talk about which one that we created creates a line of reflection. Construct a vertical line passing through point A and a horizontal line passing through point B. It would be a vertical line through A and a horizontal line through B. Well, this one clearly doesn't work. So let's look at each of what we did. We did all these constructions and which one of these creates a line of reflection. This one does not work. And this tangent line ends up all the way over here, does not work. The midpoint doesn't even create a line of reflection, but going back to our reflection lesson, we remember that constructing a perpendicular bisector between two points is gonna create that line of reflection that always reflects the one point to the other. So the answer is B. Let's go on to problem number nine. And we're gonna zoom out for this question. We have, here's a triangle POG. Match the description of the rotation with the image of POG under that rotation. So we have to think what's happening in each one. And for that, I'm just gonna draw my triangle POG in each figure. Um, it's right about here. For this one, we have it here for that one. And then is right about, I wanna say right here. We might have to fix this one over here, but I think it's right about over there. So I just put POG in each one so I could see what's going on. This one looks like a reflection, but we don't have an option of a reflection. And what's important as well is to label your vertices because when we're labeling, things are going to move and we got to know what's what. So we have O, P, and G. So never forget the labeling step. Rotate 300 degrees clockwise around O. So we're rotating clockwise. We're rotating around O. This is a rotation, but that's definitely not 300 degrees. This one rotates clockwise. Um, this one looks like it's probably correct, but we're going to check the other ones. This is a rotation, but it's not 300 degrees. It's definitely much smaller than that. And this is a rotation around point P, so not helpful. So 
we matched A, rotate 60 degrees clockwise around O. So definitely not this one because this is a rotation around P. And we could immediately match that right there. And then we're rotating 60 degrees clockwise around point O. Now, what I notice here is 60 degrees clockwise means we're moving this way. And so let's look. This guy, he moves down to this guy. And that's the 60 degrees clockwise. So it would be right here. D would be 240 degrees counterclockwise around O. And does that make sense? This line, OP, is going to go all the way around counterclockwise to the OP over there. And that is correct. So we have now matched all of these things up. Now, when I'm looking at a rotation, and I'm going to do this, I'm going to zoom in on one problem just so you could see this extra clearly. Pause the video now if you need to look at what I did before I do this. So when I'm looking at a rotation, there's a lot going on in the figure. So let's look at this guy right here. We have the blue OPG. This is our O, uh, this is our G, and this is our P. And what's happening? We say this is a rotation. So what I'm looking at is I'm going to look at specifically one side. I'm looking at this guy right here. And I'm saying, what does it take to rotate OP to O prime P prime? This goes from here down to there. Alternatively, it can go from here all the way around to over there. Now, in this case, this was the last answer, so I could match it up. But I see 60, 30, uh, 30, no, 60, 120, 180, 240, which tells me it's that 240 degrees clockwise rotation. But what I'm really looking at is I'm looking at this point, and I'm saying this line segment, I'm saying how many degrees does it take to rotate to get to the corresponding line segment? So for rotations, focus on one line segment rather than the whole figure because it will be much easier to visualize. The same way when you're looking at translations, focus on one point rather than anything else to find that directed line segment. So looking at this, I see when I rotate 240, he lines up down there, which also happens to be the same thing as a 60 degrees clockwise rotation. All right. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe, and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next one.